In this video we'll look at some examples for calculating probability. These are a little more challenging than the, the previous two videos. Um, the first one is the probability of a flashlight not working is 0.1. I'm just going to use n for not working. So the probability of not working is 0.1, which means the probability that it works, which I'm going to use w, has to be 0.9. And that's the complement. There's only two options. It works or it doesn't work. So if it not working is 0.1, working is 0.9. So the probability of three flashlights and none of them work So not working, not working, not working. We can do the same thing as we did for if you flip a coin three times and you get three heads, which was half times half times half. Uh, so the probability of not working is one time, or point 0.1 times point 0.1 times point 0.1. So you have three flashlights. The probability that none of them work is point zero zero one if the probability that any single one of them doesn't work is 0.1. Alright, the next question uh, is if you have three flashlights, what's the probability that exactly one of them work? So there's going to be three options for this. The first one could work and the other two don't. Or the first one could not work, the second one works, the third doesn't, or the first two don't work and the third one does. And what we would do is find the probability of each of those and add them all together. So the probability of working is 0.9 and the probability of not working is 0.1. Again I'm just multiplying the probabilities of each event. Okay. So not working is 0.1, working is 0.9, not working is 0.1, and the last one is not working 0.1, not working 0.1, and working 0.9. Um, each of these is going to uh, multiply out to the same value, 0.009. And if we add these all together, we get 0 0.027. So there's three ways that exactly one out of three can work. We have to find the probability of each of them and add them together. All right, the last one, we have three flashlights. What's the probability that at least one works? So now we have more things to look at. So at least one could be exactly one. And we did that in the last one, letter B. And each of those is point zero zero nine. We could have the probability that two of them work. There's three ways for that to happen. Um, and each of these is going to be 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.1 there's two working and one not working. And if we multiply that, 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.1, we get 0 0.081 for each of those outcomes. And then we have the probability that all three work, which would be 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9, which gives us 0 0.8. Seven two nine. So the total probability is going to be 0.729 plus three ways 
that each have a probability of 0 0.081 and three ways where each has a probability of 0 0.009. And if we multiply all that out, we get 0.729 plus 0.243 plus 0.027. And our total is 0.999. Okay. Now, that was a lot of work. Um, let's remember the complement rule. So the complement rule, that if at least one works, that's the complement of none working. So I'll put this over here. The probability that at least one works is the complement, or one minus the probability that none work. And we already calculated the probability that none work. That was in our first example. So we get 1 minus 0 0.001, which equals 0.999. So again, we can do it the long way, find all the different outcomes, and add them all together, and we get 0.999. Or the short way, find the complement, subtract from 1, and we get the same answer. The next example is looking at a box that contains marbles. There's two blue, four green, three yellow, and one red for a total of 10. So the first question is, what is the probability of selecting one blue marble? Uh, we're going to use the classical approach because each marble has the same chance of being drawn. So we're going to look at the number of ways you can draw a blue marble. out of the total number of possibilities. So there are two blue marbles in the box out of a total of 10 possible marbles to draw. And we can just leave the probability like this. You don't have to divide and get a decimal or simplify. You can just leave it as a fraction. So the probability of selecting one green marble same way. The number of ways to draw a green marble, there are four ways you can do that, because there's four green marbles, and there's a total of ten marbles in the box. The probability of selecting one yellow marble, there's three yellow ones out of ten in the box. Okay. The next couple of questions are going to introduce replacement and without replacement. Um, replacement means after you draw one marble, you're going to return it to the box and then draw a second marble. Without replacement means you're going to draw a marble from the box and then leave it out. And that changes the probabilities of all of the remaining marbles. There's not going to be 10 anymore. There's only going to be 9 in the box. So we'll do with replacement first. The probability of selecting one blue marble and one yellow marble with replacement. So one blue marble, there were two marbles in the box out of ten. And so that's blue. With replacement, now we're going to put that blue one back and then select another one. And the probability of selecting a yellow one was three out of ten. Because remember, you put that blue one back, so now there's still ten in the box. So then we just multiply those together. So our total probability for picking out one blue and then one yellow with replacement is 6 out of 100 ways. You could write out the entire sample space for drawing two marbles and then count up how many is a blue and then a yellow. Uh, that would take a long time. So the multiplication rule simplifies it and makes it shorter. Uh, the next one, the probability of selecting one blue and one yellow without replacement. You're not going to put the blue one back. So again, the first one you draw, the blue one, there's 10 marbles and there's two blue ones. But now if you don't put that back, there's still three yellow ones in there, 
but there's only nine total marbles left in the box because you kept that blue one out. So now when we multiply those, our total probability changes. So it's not 6 out of 100 anymore, it's 6 out of 90. Next two, same idea. Two green marbles in a row with replacement. Uh, one green one was 4 out of 10. And with replacement, you're going to put that back before you draw the next one. So the next one has the same probability. So we get an overall probability of 16 out of 100. And then two green marbles without replacement. The first one is 4 out of 10. Now you're going to keep that one out so there's only three marbles left that are green and only nine total marbles left and we get 12 out of 90. Okay, so again that's with and without replacement. Uh, make sure that you check on that on your um, example or other practice problems. Uh, if it's with or without replacement it changes the probability of the remaining choices.